Hi guys, today I'm going to talk about all the books that I bought in 2021, at least all the new releases that I bought. I actually don't buy that many books and most of the time when I do buy books, it's a book that I've already read and liked and I know I'm gonna wanna read it again or just, you know, have it around for some reason. So that's usually when I decide to buy books and I try to buy books from used bookstores or you know other places where I can get a discount. So for me to buy a new release is actually kind of a big deal. And I pretty much only do that with things I'm quite sure I'm going to like or feel confident in. I actually have a trick for you guys. At least this works in my library system. You can recommend books that haven't been released yet and then they'll automatically go on hold when the book releases. And if you do that recommendation early enough before the book releases, then when the book comes out, you might actually be able to check it out right away and not have to wait even for a brand new release. So most of the books that I'm gonna show you are books that are sequels or by authors that I really like or things like that. But I thought it would just be fun because this sort of shows you what I am so invested in that I was willing to buy it in 2021 before I had even read it. There are a few more books, like a couple more that I read in 2021 and then bought them, but I'm not including them in this list and there's only a couple of them. First off, we have A Desolation Called Peace by Arkady Martine. I talked about this on my best books of 2021 video, so obviously I did end up liking it. This is the sequel to A Memory Called Empire. I really enjoyed it. And, and this one I actually got as an advanced reader copy. This might have even been the first book that I ever did get as an ARC. So I obviously liked it enough when I read the ARC that I did not cancel my pre-order. So obviously also, since I didn't mention this, a lot of these books are also books that I had on pre-order um, because yeah, I usually, if I'm going to buy it new and on release, I, I've usually pre-ordered it. So here we have Cytonic by Brandon Sanderson. This was the third Skyward book. Um, the Skyward series is not my favorite Brandon Sanderson by any means, but I do love Brandon Sanderson and I do buy and read basically everything he writes and I did really enjoy this book. It sort of, it fit in kind of with my general feelings about the series. I enjoyed it. It wasn't, I wasn't crazy about it, but it was a good time and I'm happy to have it on my shelf with all the other Brandon Sanderson. Also what I can't show you because they were on Kindle, I did buy and read all three of the Skyward novellas that he did with Jancy Patterson that came out, uh, two of them came out before Cytonic and then the third one came out afterwards. So those are really fun. You can tell they were written by a co-author really, like it wasn't quite the same as reading Sanderson, but I really enjoyed reading them. I think the third one was my favorite, but the first two were okay. I don't know if I can remember the titles, so that's why I haven't said them. I think Sunreach, and Read On and Evershore. I'm pretty sure I got that right, but we'll see. Another thing that I bought this year, and this wasn't supposed to be really like a book haul, but it's kind of turning into one. Uh, I got the Doom Slug plushie from the Brandon Sanderson store. Maybe I should have made this the thumbnail. I don't know. Maybe I can. <laughs> but I just, I wasn't going to spend actual money on this, but then I, I, I saw it. And it's just so freaking cute. I'm not sure if this should really count as a 2021 new release because it's technically a re-release. She published it a few years ago and then it, I think, went out of print and has now been re-released. But this is The Beautiful Ones by Silvia Moreno-Garcia. Um, I will admit I was a bit lured by the cover, which is gorgeous. Um, I always have a I really like her writing. I have very mixed experiences with her books because her books tend to be really different from each other. This book I enjoyed. I didn't love it. So, but the book is so pretty that I don't really regret pre-ordering it, but I, I didn't necessarily need to either. I think the library and waiting a little bit would have been okay. My biggest regret in terms of buying new before having read it is probably The Mask of Mirrors by M.A. Carrick. This book took me like the whole year to read, not because it's that long, it's a little long, but I put it down for about six months by accident. Um, there was This book was just getting a lot of hype on booktube in the earlier part of the year and I was convinced I was gonna love it and it was good, I just, I didn't love it. That's why I think this was in my most disappointing, the worst and most disappointing books of 2021, just because I was so hyped for this and was kind of let down 
but I think that was more, you know, I was let down by my own hype, not because there was anything wrong with the book. One of the co-authors of this book, Marie Brennan, I read the entire Memoirs of Lady Trent series by her this year, and I really loved that. So it's not like I don't like her writing. But this was a book that I also, I sort of regret buying this new before reading it because that was very much just giving into hype. Like that just made me, I was just telling myself this story about how this was going to be a new favorite and it wasn't. I'm going to read the second book in this trilogy, but I have it, I have it on hold at the library right now. I didn't buy it. Then of course I pre-ordered Witness for the Dead by Catherine Addison. Um, this is the follow-up, not really sequel, kind of sequel to The Goblin Emperor. This one I was very, very happy with. Um, I actually, I was so excited for this that I was traveling when it released and I actually pre-ordered it to the place that I was staying. Well, actually I remembered about a week before the trip that I had pre-ordered this book and so I had to go online and change the address it was shipping to, but it all worked out and I got it and it was really good. The only thing that I'll be showing you in this video that I haven't read yet was The Fall of Babel. This is the last book in the Books with Babel. Um, and my husband has read it. Actually, again, I got an advanced reader copy of this and didn't have time to read it. And then I had the pre-order and I still haven't had time to read it. So I really need to get to this soon. I think I'm, I'm a little bit nervous about it because I, I loved these books and my husband had kind of a weird reaction to reading this and I don't really know why. So yeah, I might be procrastinating a little bit, but I actually, I want to buy books one through three in the Books of Babel. I just, I haven't done it yet, but I really enjoyed them. And I love the series enough that I want to own it, except maybe, I guess if I end up being super disappointed in book four, maybe I won't feel that way anymore and I'll just own book four. I don't know, that would be kind of weird. So now I've showed you all the books that I physically bought new in 2021. And by, I mean, bought new, like new releases. I don't know, whatever, the point of this video. So now you've seen all the new books that I bought in 2021. And there are a couple more that I should talk about because I bought them on Audible. So we had Lux, which was a Reckoner's book, collaboration between Brandon Sanderson and Stephen Bowles. That was really fun. I was happy. I mean, I think the only way to get it was to buy it on Audible anyway, but I was happy with buying that. I listened to it. My husband listened to it. It was a good time. And then after listening to the entire Penrick and Desdemona series by Lois McMaster Bujold, the last two books in that series, I think both released in 2021, unless I've made a mistake. And I ended up getting both of those from Audible because they were not available in the library yet. Now I tend to be very stingy with my Audible and I try not to buy novellas on Audible because it feels kind of like a waste of a credit. But I bought both the novella which was Masquerade in Lodi, and the only novel in the series, which is the, I think, most recently published one, called Assassins of Thassalon. Those are both great. Actually, Masquerade in Lodi was one of my least favorite novellas in the series, but it was still a good time. I will happily spend time with that world and those characters anytime. And now I have just a, a couple uh, honorable mentions that were also audiobooks that I'll call them, which were things that I kind of, I don't know, they don't quite fit this category, but I feel like I should mention them. So Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. Uh, I used my trick and I did get it from the library on release, but basically the same time as that, we also got it on Audible because my husband was planning to listen to it. So I think, I think we were going to buy that one no matter what. I don't think we had pre-ordered it or anything, but I mean, I think I'm going to count that on this list. And the last one I'll mention, which again, I feel like this doesn't quite fit, but close enough. The Black Tongue Thief by Christopher Bullman. I got it from the library this summer and read the first few chapters and I actually really liked it. But I just, it was one of those times where everything comes from the library at once and some things just expire before you can read them. So that happened, but I recommended it to my husband based on those couple of chapters. And so he got it from Audible and listened to it and really, really enjoyed it. And I'm planning to listen to it soon. So I feel like that's borderline. You know, I bought it after reading a couple of chapters, which isn't something that happens that much, but technically I didn't buy it before reading it at all. 
So you can count that one as you want. But anyway, those are all the new releases that I bought in 2021. I hope this was a fun look inside my book buying behavior. I'm curious to know how you guys approach buying new books. Do you pre-order a lot of new releases or do you only buy books that you've read or do you not buy any books that you've already read because you don't like to reread? Let me know down in the comments.